Okay, let's take a look at paragraph 484 of the encyclopedia, but now in the English translation by Wallace. Let's uh, see what that is all about. Um, paragraph 484. But the purposive action of this free will is to realize its concept liberty in these externally objective aspects. That's the first part of this paragraph. So, uh, theoretical intelligence, theoretical reason has discovered that in it, it has a will to achieve the truth, to find the truth and express the truth. So, the free will is oriented towards an external world, externality, first of all, the, the world of the things that it understands theoretically, but then also the world of actions. Now, this free will wants to realize its main concept, because that is what it has found within itself. It has found within itself the idea of freedom. It wants to realize its concept. Uh, now he says liberty in the translation, which is correct, but also confusing, because it's the same idea of freiheit, freedom, that, he, um, that the free will has discovered within itself. And it will only be liberty after it has made this transition to objective uh, spirit or objective mind. So it wants to realize itself. It wants to give itself an external existence. It wants to um, understand itself in something objective. Well, that can only be if this objectivity is actually created by the free will. Externally objective aspects is not a really perfect translation, but it wants to express itself in this externality. Um, in doing so, it makes the latter, these externally objective aspects, into a world that is molded and shaped by the former, the free will, by liberty, which in it is thus at home with itself. It's with itself, in its other. It's totally locked together with it. Now, the concept um, plus its reality, concept plus its reality, is called the idea in Hegel's philosophy. The concept accordingly is perfected to or realized as the idea, the idea of liberty being the total expression of the concept of freedom um, in um, the objective world that it has created itself. But then, liberty shaped into the actuality of a world, when liberty, when freedom has expressed itself in the external world, it receives the form of necessity. It has to act according to the inner dictates of free will. And it creates an external reality that actually seems to limit its own freedom because it has established, it has shaped, it has molded an objective world that it encounters as, well, as something external. The free will expresses itself as a whole system of social practices and laws. So, when it encounters itself within this external world, it encounters itself it encounters itself in the shape of a law, a limitation, therefore, of the free will. It becomes uh, a necessary world. And it has two sides. So, first of all, there is an organization of the principles of liberty. The external world that free will creates um, is an expression of these inner ideas of free will. Things like recognition and the specific relationship to objects that we call possession, or rather ownership. Um, it encounters the freedom in uh, living together with other human beings, in family, in society. But that has a certain organization. It's dependent upon human actions. If it's an organism, it simply grows out of its own nature, that is an organization. There is freedom involved in making policy decisions, for instance. And then he says that is the substantial nexus. That is the inner heart of this objective world 
its substance is a given. It's in itself. In itself, whatever it is. But there's also a side to us. How does it, this objective world then, uh, how is that expressed um, to us? Well, the phenomenal nexus, how it appears to us, is power or authority. And there is a power in the world that actually um, forces us to follow the dictates, ultimately, of our own free will. But we encounter it not as something that we can um, choose on our own. It's not free will as random free will. It's liberty, that is to say, it is molded in a system of uh, principles, the first thing, this organization of social life, and secondly, it encounters us as something external, that is authority. How is it possible that this corresponds to this sentiment, this feeling of obedience? Well, because we recognize in this exercise of authority the principles of liberty that free will actually has created. So this is a very important Hegelian idea that even though the social practices and the laws in society encounter us as something external, we can still recognize their rationality, we can still recognize that they, all of them, are expressions of the free will uh, and that it is a social organization depending on the exercise of free will and that obedience is something rational, something that is um, coming from the free will. For instance, if I recognize that something is a property owned by someone else, there is an organization of the principles of liberty that says that I cannot infringe on someone else's rights. Now, that is a limitation to my free will, but at the same time, it has this rational element. The free will wants it to be like that, and it makes sense, because if I recognize the ownership by others, they will recognize the ownership that I execute over my property. But it's something, something that we are conscious of. We are conscious of the necessity of obedience. We are conscious of the different principles of liberty that are uh, within the social practices and the laws of our society. Uh, and that is how and to what extent liberty that has become the actuality of the world also has the form of necessity. Okay, so that is basically the uh, meaning of this passage, paragraph 484, um, and we will talk about this paragraph and other paragraphs in our next sessions. Thank you for listening, and Place see you next them time. In a phase and let them pass on as quick.